Yes, I said it indeed, and I'll say it again, but not on air, Toby. It's not going to happen. Uh, hey, welcome, Toby. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining me. It is, what's today, Wednesday, 8 o'clock on the East Coast. That means it's time for This Week at Gear Report, where we recap all of the wonderful new published content that's come out since the show last Wednesday at 8 o'clock, and talk about anything else that is in the works and on the way, and... Uh, you know, we, we may expect to see here soon. So uh, what, while we're waiting for people to get the notifications and wander in, um, as, as you get here, please leave a comment. Let us know you're here. We appreciate uh, hearing from you. Um, we should probably do, we should probably do introductions really quick. Um, you look off. You look an awful lot like the guy that left the comment out there uh, for Mining Ridge Armory. That would be me for sure. Yeah, Toby from right. Mining Ridge Armory, part-time author for Gear Report. Whenever I actually have something to do, you know how that goes. Hmm. I see. Okay, so uh, let's see. I'm waiting, TJ. I thought TJ. Uh, he sent me a note that he would be rolling into the house right about the time we got started so he may be a few minutes late when he gets in here um i just barely made it i'll tell you what it's uh it's tough this time of year when uh was normally it's not this time of year but with with the rona this year they put off the high school wrestling season until now so um you know you got to coach when they're in season so uh so that's where i was until about 18 minutes ago, I yanked those wrestling shoes off and headed home. All right, I really don't like the look that's giving me. The green backlight is making me look all peaked. I, I feel a little magenta here. Let's see. Blue. Oh, that makes me look like an Oompa Loompa. Yeah, green is too pink. Red makes me look blue. You know, I'm beginning to think that getting this background light may not have been as great of an idea as I thought it would be. Maybe if I turn it down a little, is that going to help? But I still look bright orange. I don't know. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, truthfully, I don't know. That is a little weird. You'd think that, what's up, Defense Dad? You'd think that whatever color you had in the background, I, maybe it's reflecting off of your computer screen and back at you a different mm -mm. color or no? I think the camera is color correcting. Like it is, ah. it's, it's white balancing. Maybe I have a setting for that. Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? Show advanced. Nope. All it says is I can pick high definition or standard <laughs> definition, but I can't change that. All right. Let's see what else happens here. Well, well, we're killing a few minutes waiting for people to get here. That's supposed to be yellow, but it almost wipes it out and makes it look white. But then it just makes me look like a tan. Yeah, just totally gray. That, I'm rocking the, um, I can run for president now. So if you put it on random and put on like some, uh, maybe some dubstep in the background, just at a, a medium volume to where, see if anybody would actually notice and say anything. All right, let me see. Oh, I think I did it wrong. That said, was pulsating seven colors. I don't see it. Pulsating there red. There you go. There you go. Pulsating now it's red. Good. That didn't. That doesn't blue. seem to be doing very yeah. well. Pulsating blue. Pulsating Ooh, seven green. color strobe flash. Oh, there you go. All right. I would Where's like to. Step? I'd like to apologize to anyone who's having a seizure right now. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn that off. I don't, I don't think that is really doing what I wanted. No. Dang it. So you're going for the bias lighting is what you're going for. Is that the effect you're going for bias lighting? I, I don't know what that means, but I want, I want like a glow coming up behind me bias with a, like a faint white light right on me, just on me. And then the glow behind me, which I, I gotta, I gotta change where that light is too. I don't, I don't like that. I'm going to change it all. Yeah. It's bias then, lighting. So in the, in the AV world, that's a real big thing right now for, for televisions. Like you'll put it on a, uh, an LCD monitor on a screen and you are on a wall and then behind it pointing backwards towards the wall, you'll put like a, a darker offset color and mm -hmm. it actually tricks your eye into, um, to a more HD 
HD perception of what it's focused on, which is the television. It actually it actually works, and it's called biased lighting or bias lighting. Yeah, I'm not a nerd. Yeah. So what what Defense Dad's saying. That's kind of what I was trying to do here. I have a key light that is like right up there. I'm pointing right at it, uh, pointed down you know, at my face and uh, it, it wasn't doing it. I think maybe if I have like a low key light looking up at me just to kind of get my face without any of the background. I don't know. I don't know. I'll play with it. We'll figure it out uh, eventually. Or I'll just, you know, turn myself back into an Oompa Loompa. That was kind of entertaining. I think... Uh, Oh, no, so if, we're on stroke. If, if you could do red and do like a, a hellscape, that would be awesome. Just do that. Red. Well, and it makes, makes me look blue. It just, it tries to balance it out. Oh, so, so disappointing. That was a good suggestion, by the way. All right. So if I turn that down. We'll go back here. At least that's kind of close to a normal color. I still look weird, but that's going to be the case no matter what, right? Okay. So what's going on in your world? I, I'm so busy I can't even see straight, and that is the uh, the hard and hard and fast of it. So yeah, I'm, I'm part time in school now, uh, going for a degree, and of course I'm working full time, and that's bumping up around fifty plus hours per week. We've got the three properties that we're maintaining as well as, you know, mowing about six acres a week. Mine right. Ridge Armory has been pretty steady now that we've built the new facility as the first of the year. You know, just so on and so on and so on. In that case, you probably need to move your color light behind you so it's not projecting on you. See, that's what's baffling me. The colored light is behind me. It is. Uh, all right, let me get that out of the way. That is a wall wash light pointing up at the wall. So hmm. it's not on me. It's not up here at all. It's all in the background. And somehow the camera software is interpreting all the green that I'm throwing on the wall and trying to balance it out on the front end, even though there's no green up here, which is why it makes me look a different color. It, it's taken all the green out of my face to try to make the make it probably this white area back here to try to make it look white so yeah fun with lights and cameras and we'll, we'll figure it out eventually but uh i think the next step is going to be finding a manual control so i can lock the white balance if i can lock the white balance on the camera somehow like maybe run a virtual camera through osb that's what I'll do. I'll run a virtual camera, but I bet StreamYard's still going to mess with it when it gets over here. We shall see. All right. We have killed eight minutes waiting for people to show up. And uh, I've got to remember to send the reminder out midday so that people will have it on their mind that the show is going to come up in the evening. Because otherwise, then the, the actual reminder goes out a couple minutes before the show starts and people are already busy, I think. All right, so let's dive into our agenda for, oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Agenda for the evening. I'm going to go to share and share screen, and I'm going to pick the gear report website page. All right, so we have, I believe, two articles in here since last week. Let's look at the first one, written by none other than Toby himself. Yeah, it's been it's been a couple of months. I've been on a hiatus with trying to get everything going the first of this year and didn't have a yep. whole lot of stuff in queue. Um, so Beretta sent me Beretta sent me some items. They're uh, back about it was probably summer of last year. We put together a, a wish list from Beretta and I put a couple of items on the wish list and just to be quite frank, you know, not to sugarcoat it, they didn't send me what I asked for, period. Right. Just bottom line. Um, now I did ask for a backpack though. So they did send me one of the backpacks that I had put on the list. Um, just because I wanted, uh, you know, I like to, I don't want to give away too much from the article, but I like, um, an EDC backpack that doesn't scream tactical or doesn't scream right. military or law enforcement. And yeah. I, I saw this new backpack they had and I thought, well, you know what, that could fit the bill. So they did send that, uh, among, uh, was one of the things I actually sent like they were supposed to. And, and so I've had it for several months. 
and I've been carrying it. Uh, and again, I don't want to give away too much from the article, but I can say that uh, with certainty. And if I, if you want me to, I can grab it and pick it up here. Um, a few things. Number one is I consistently carried over 25 pounds in it at a shot whenever. So like that picture you see right there, if you want to click mm -hmm. on that one, um, I was yeah, carrying true. the down under let's get to work. Either one of those next two. So I was able to, those three pictures in particular show it pretty well. I was able to carry a, a broke down AR9 platform in the laptop pocket and a slick plate carrier, security plate carrier uh, in the main compartment, and then use the water bladder pouch in the back for a, uh, a Microsoft Surface or a laptop pouch in the back. Um, and as you can see, it, it fits snugly, but it fit. And yeah. you know that, that was consistently well over 25 pounds that I was carrying. Um, it was comfortable. I never heard the dreaded you know, thread popping sound. Um, it wasn't unreasonable to carry around. Um, you know, it's pretty much it's held up exactly like I would want it to and exactly like I expected so far. Uh, the rest of the backpack, for the most part, is exactly what you'd expect. I mean, as far as the, the laser cut molly goes, it, it's very professional, very clean, very neat. As far as the, the pocket organization in the front of it, uh, the pass throughs for the water bladder, the mesh zippered pockets, the YKK zippers, the tastefully done zipper pulls, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff is exactly what you'd expect for a backpack of this type of quality. Um, and the one thing I didn't list as a pro is the price point. So it's actually on par with some of those other daily carry bags, but maybe just a little bit cheaper uh, by oh. 20, 30, 40 bucks if you go to the Beretta website. And I would yeah. imagine if you caught it somewhere off of the Beretta website, you might actually get a little cheaper. That's surprising. This is one of the brands that I typically expect. Like if I see that bag at Beretta that you'd find it for, you know, half of the price without probably. the Beretta name on it. Yeah. Pr truthfully, probably so. But that said though, if you know, and let's see what they got listed for on the website right now. Um, full MSRP at their website. As we speak and as we type and as we're recording this right now is for either Brown or Coyote is only $139 and that's full mm -hmm. price. That's not if you catch it you know, at a Midway or um, Brown Ales or, you know, Sportsman's Guide or anything like that. So that's pretty yeah. reasonable. And, and for anyone saying $139, um, if you pick up the $40 version off of eBay, I think generally you should expect it to not carry 25 pounds day after day <laughs> yeah. without the True story. dreaded thread popping sound. <laughs> True story. And I can tell you, I'm a backpack nerd for sure as far as like the the low profile you know edc type bags and you know some of my favorite are the the and i hate to mention two brands in the same sentence but you know i'm going to but you know winger because it's very low profile very business case and you're not going to get out with a winger backpack for under 80 or 90 bucks and those are not designed for any type of of tactical medical law enforcement use period they are just business purely and then of course you got your vertex bags I don't even have to tell you how much those things cost for one that's comparable size uh, right. and comparable quality. You know, you pretty much have to go down to something like Condor or uh, was it one Tigris or something like that to get mm -hmm. a cheaper price point than what this one comes in at for what you're getting in the size. Right. Awesome. Well, um, four out of five gears. That's pretty good. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want all the details, you're going to have to go read all the details. Uh, but uh, we appreciate the the thorough but not too thorough summary so there's still something left for us to oh, quite a bit yeah look at quite a bit of details all right awesome so the other recently published article um I'll tell you this is going to be a limited audience but for the people you know what i right clicked and open i'm just going to click and open for the people that this matters to it's going to matter a lot for the people that it doesn't it's not going to matter at all but uh, if you happen to be one of the folks taking a group of scouts out towards either the NRA Whittington Center, actually, it doesn't have to be scouts. If you're a shooting competitor or going to get training at the NRA Whittington Center in Raton, New Mexico, or you're going to Philmont Scout Ranch or the Philmont Training Center uh, just south of Cimarron, you will be close enough to the town of Cimarron, New Mexico, that understanding what's there, what's open, uh, you know, lodging, restaurants, shopping, museums, state parks, 
what what's not open. This is important because if Philmont Scout Ranch was closed two out of the last three summers, uh, they didn't get a lot of the traffic they typically get. So the businesses that depend on all that seasonal traffic have been struggling big time. So uh, we reached out the uh, one of the things that I do in my copious spare time is run the Philmont Trek Talk group on Facebook. Uh, we got over 2,000 people who are there to learn how to take a crew of scouts out to Philmont Scout Ranch and do some uh, backcountry, backpacking, high adventure type stuff. So this article was really put together for that specific audience. Although, like I said, uh, if it's competitors going out to the NRA Whittington Center, they could find this useful too, which means tomorrow I'm going to have to go edit this article and throw some NRA Whittington Center keywords in there so it shows up on search for that as well because this could be incredibly useful for folks out there because that place is in the middle of nowhere you want to you want to go get a bite to eat, eat you got to ride into cimarron so it's going to be valuable to them too so there you have it that's what we have there for the two articles that have been published and uh let me see i'm going to try to load something up in another window here see if it'll load for me and we'll stop that screen. And uh, oh, it's, the internet is not cooperating on the other page for me. I'll post. So, so I take it uh, part of what you're saying is you need some more stuff coming your direction to review. Is that what I'm hearing, Toby? So, yes, no. So, it, I've gotten a little finicky about what I, I do invest the effort and time into. What I'm hoping is that, you know, assuming we're still going out to, to 88 uh, yeah. in late May, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm hoping after that, you know, for starters, you and I can have, you know, big, long conversations about what we need to put in queue and, and that kind of thing. But more importantly, I'm hoping something will inspire me while I'm down there and it'll just kind of jump up and say, hey, help me. Um, I still do have the, um, I guess we're doing, we're, we're jumping into the what's coming up, right? So we are. Yeah, oh. before we get there, before we get All there, right. we got a question that I missed while I was on the other screen. Do the zippers have a lifetime warranty? Or YKK zippers on that, right? They are indeed. And I do not know if they have a lifetime warranty, but they are YKK. Okay. Well, truth in advertising right there. He doesn't know. He told you. Yeah. I respect that. TJ is still installing a water heater. Man. That's a pretty rookie excuse there, TJ. That but, is pretty you know, lame. Yeah. But at least he then screamed, Toby. What's up, TJ? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, virtual a virtual hello since you're like not even here here on camera for me to see you, but yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show something else as we move into all right, where's my banner? We're gonna go into reviews that will be published soon, which makes me feel bad because I never did the recently completed reviews banner. That was a wasted opportunity, wasn't it? So now we're going to move on to reviews that will be published soon. And uh, and I'm, I'm going to give you a sneak peek here because I kind of want some feedback. I, I've been kind of moving a different direction. I, I broke my foot five and a half, almost six weeks ago, I think. And to tie myself down because I'm a terrible patient, like I don't sit still to, to keep myself from moving around too much. I... Uh, Sorry, I got distracted. I mean, oh, you guys are already playing. All right. <laughs> do, do you know what he's talking about there? Did, yeah, did look at my the, response. Yeah, did, you, my did response. you see the video? Yeah. Oh, look at that. All right. Uh, so anyhow, since we've got some stuff, uh, I've got some stuff coming. And, you know, we typically we focused on outdoor stuff. Um, and since I have been stuck indoors with the broken foot, I've been doing something different. And I thought, you know what? I'm spending all my time playing with these guitars. I'm going to not do reviews, but just kind of informational stuff. So as I've picked up some guitars that are a little bit, uh, the information on them on the internet is a little bit scarce. I have uh, said, you know what? I'm going to document some of this stuff and make it easy for people to find. And uh, so this is like a Korean made around late 90s model guitar from a company called Hamer. And uh, if you want to enlarge the pictures and get uh, you know better look at that, 
you are welcome to do that once the article is published, which is probably going to be tomorrow. I'm still looking for a couple, like an overview of specs that I can uh, drop in here. And then I'm going to call that one done and publish it. And I've got several more that I'm going to post up, maybe one a week or something. I'll just throw a guitar up every now and then just to keep things fresh. And because I'm spending all this time looking at them and I want to share them with everyone because I think they're cool. What do, what do you think? Is that too far outside of the wheelhouse of what we do at Gear Report? Or is it okay if I want to just toss something up every now and then that's completely off the wall? Well, technically, aren't you reporting on a piece of gear? You know, that's why we're called Gear Report, because I have short attention span theater. And that means that I can't stay focused on anything for more than a couple hours. So, yeah, it was on purpose. That's All it. Right. I mean, you, you, you brought up the point with the Philmont, um, with the Philmont articles, it, you know, you know, I'm, I'm preaching the choir here, but you've gotten probably more hit, more traffic on some of those informative articles than you have on some of your other top rated review articles and at the actual hard website itself. So yep. yeah, I mean, anything informative like that to drive traffic to the site, you know, it just helps the reviews and stuff anyways. Yep. And I try not to get too depressed with the idea that all that time and effort goes into some of those, you know, highly produced, highly researched, tons of work, lots of editing and video editing and picture editing. And mm -hmm. then for whatever reason, some of those articles just really don't catch and, uh, and people don't see them to the extent that we'd like. So yeah. it's nice when something does pop, it helps raise the overall profile of the site, which helps all the other stuff get found. So I'm kind of a hoe when it comes to publishing stuff. If it's going to be useful enough that people are going to want to click on it and look at it, then I'll put it out there. That's kind of the way I approach it. Yep. So I really wanted to be able to hang something on the wall because we're not allowed to uh, actual actually handle firearms right now. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you know what I can do? Oh, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to go search for something here. Um, something arrived at quarter horse arms and I have not yet made it over to pick it up. So, uh, let's see, I'm going to search for that keyword and, mm. all right, maybe I didn't publish that part. We're going to open this one instead and then go back to share the screen and, I'm kind of excited about this. I've got to figure out why Maxim Defense sent their new uh, PDX 300 SBR, and they were supposed to have the can on it when it arrived. And when the guy shipped it, he just sent a note that said, oh, and I'm not shipping the can just yet. Talk to Dave. And then Dave never said anything, and then I forgot, so... Uh, now that it's here, I should reach out to Dave and say, hey, buddy, is that can coming? Because I don't want to blow through all the ammo you sent and then have the can show up. You know, I want to do it all at once. But I'm pretty excited that the uh, that PDX in 300 Blackout, uh, you know, they've done something really cool with it. Their hate break that they put on it um, is designed to create a similar amount of back pressure to the can so that they can tune the firearm to operate on whatever ammo um, either with the with the hate break or so so unsuppressed or suppressed i think that's kind of a clever little trick to be able to do that i don't know probably some other brands are doing something similar creating back pressure with a break so that they can balance the operating pressures but uh, it's not one that I had heard of before. And I wish I had taken pictures off of my phone to show you guys. But Jeremy from, uh, yeah, he doesn't really have a name for his company. He called himself Safety Third, I believe. Safety Third Customs or something like that a couple years ago. And I asked him today, this morning, when, it, when he was, we were over doing some Humvee work in the garage. I said, is that what you're calling your business? He says, you know, I'm not sure. Um, but Jeremy Johnson does a bunch of metal fabrication, specific parts for Humvees and H1 Hummers. And uh, I bought some door skins uh, to make the fiberglass doors, put a steel layer on them to give them some more rigidity. And uh, 
he said, you know what, why don't I come over and help you install them and you can shoot a video while we're doing it. So we did that this morning. We're going to have a Humvee video coming of how to install Jeremy Johnson's Humvee X-Door skins. Um, they're, they're pretty cool. You know, a lot of people think you know, it's just to it's fake armor to make it look like you have armored doors. But I'll tell you, I've had regular X doors and doors with the supplemental armor skins on them. And those those skins aren't going to really that as, as armor. They're not bulletproof. They're not going to do anything in that regard, really. But they make the doors a lot stiffer, which makes them feel better. You know, they don't rattle as much. They insulate a little bit better. They're quieter. So I'm pretty excited about that. We were able to put one on today. I've got a, I forgot to go, I forgot to get the primer so we could prime and paint them before we riveted them in place so they don't get corrosion under them. So we, we grabbed some paint, painted under the first one and said, all right, I, I got to treat the rest of them before we do the, do the others. But so those are some things I have in my queue. I've got the, the PDX I'm going to work on here as soon as I can get over to Allen's. Uh, to, to quarter horse arms. I've got to cut that video for installing the skins on the X doors. I should probably do a video and show off the new swing arm with the machine gun mount that sits in the passenger door. So the front passenger can have their own kind of mobile mounted machine gun sitting out the door. Yeah. I saw you post a, a picture up, a teaser piece, picture on Facebook, but no follow up to it yet. Yeah, because um, the half doors that I got, um, the front doors don't fit like they're supposed to. The hinges were installed. Either the hinges were installed in the wrong place or the latch was installed in the wrong place or a little bit of both. I'm not sure. I think it has to do with where the latch is positioned. So it doesn't line up with the striker when you, you're supposed to be able to pull the hard door off, set it down, the, saw, the half door, line the two pins up, drop it in place, and it just goes right up into the strike, same striker, but it doesn't. The back doors do, but the front door is about an inch off vertically. And I've got to figure out how to resolve that. So once I get that done, then I can run the half doors, which makes it easy to run the machine gun out the door, uh, which means I need to get display guns. So if you see any airsoft machine guns or other, you know, decommissioned machine guns or something, I, I have a 249. And I have a pedestal for the back. I have a swing arm for the um, I have a swing arm for the uh, door, and I have the what's it called the turret in the roof. So I have three places to mount a machine gun, but I only have one display gun to put there. All right, the Toby Fan Club is in the house. Indeed, long time no see. Hadn't seen you in a minute. That's for sure. Yeah, there we go. JB Well bailing wire and duct tape. That sounds like you're prepping for a party, bro. Yeah. Don't tell me with a good time kind of thing. That's around. what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. I thought if we kind of drug our feet a little bit, we'd give time for TJ to show up. But it sounds like he is still fighting a water heater and he's not going to make it. So um, I am going to. Okay. We have got, what, three weeks? Is it three weeks until we go to the Iraq Veteran 8888 show? All right, Sounds we're on the 5th. Right. That is, is it the weekend of the 21st or the Correct. 28th? 21st. 21st? So that's mm -hmm. like two weeks. Two weeks and a couple days. Mm -hmm. Man, that's creeping up on me. So we'll drive down the 21st, and then we'll be there the 22nd and come back late on the 23rd. That is going to be the 22nd, 23rd. If you don't know about the Iraq, Iraq Veteran 8888 Range Day, this will be the eighth year, I believe. And uh, they set it up where um, Eric invites in, uh, geez, 40, 50, 60, 70 different brands. They all set up booths. In those booths, they will have all their new products, all the cool stuff they want to show off. And uh, typically... When we're, when we're not in the midst of an ammo shortage, it's a it's kind of a free-for-all. You know, we all go up and down the firing line. All of the boots are set up right beside the shooting range. And then we walk up and down the firing line and uh, we talk to the folks in the boots. So when we're talking to them, our back is to the firing line. When we find someone we want to shoot, they, they give us a magazine in one hand, a firearm in the other. We do a 180 
turn around. Now we're pointed down range. We take a step or two to get up to the line and we're able to shoot. So you talk about convenient. They're handing you loaded magazines. They're handing you whatever weapon you want to fire. You have to take a whole two and a half steps to get to the shooting range. I mean, this is like a dream come true for folks who like to shoot. And especially if you have any uh, big YouTube personalities in the firearms community that you've always wanted to meet, they're going to be there. So um, I, I'm saying it as if I'm inviting people to go. I, I hate to break it to everyone that um, that, that is a uh, invitation-only media event. So I apologize if it sounded like I was inviting people. Uh, really just kind of talking about what we're going to go do. So our goal there typically is to identify some brands that have some cool new stuff that we want to work with and set up some reviews moving forward, as well as just kind of get introduced to all the new stuff. Um, I think that's the real benefit the brands mm -hmm. get is getting uh, getting all the different media folks up to speed on their brand and the scope of their products. So then when we're talking about other things, we can say, oh, yeah, that shot like the, you know, insert something that we shot at the range day that you know, I probably would have never put my hands on if I hadn't found it at a range day and got to shoot it. But now I have a little experience so I can draw comparisons towards it. Or if someone asks about it, I can say, you know what, I haven't put thousands of rounds through it, but I have shot it. Here were my initial impressions. What are you excited about? Have you looked at the list of brands that are going to be there? I have not. I've not had time to do my homework just yet. Same, same. Man, it's crazy how busy we've both been, it sounds like. Uh, mm -hmm. That's something we're going to dig into pretty soon. So I'm going to invite anyone out there um, between now and next week, or, or if you want to now, you can look up the Iraq Veteran 8888 8th Annual Range Day. Uh, for 2021 and the list of brands that are there. If you want to show up at next week's show and uh, say, hey, I checked out the list of brands. Here are some companies that I would like to see uh, some more information on a new product. Let us know what those are. We will be sure to target them because uh, typically um, we stay busy enough that we don't get to spend as much quality time with every single brand there as we'd like to. We have to kind of pick and choose who do we spend real time with. Um, so if, if anyone says, hey, th this is a brand or a product that I'm looking at, then uh, we can be sure to ask any questions, you know, really wrap our head around that product so we can help you understand whether it is going to make you happy or not. Because that's what we like. All right. And now is a good time. Uh, we, we're wrapping up. We're running out of things to talk about. So if you have anything out there in the, the chat that you would like to uh, mention, any questions you have, any comments you'd like to make, last call for comments. I think this is going to be kind of a, we're, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up here shortly. While we're waiting, I wonder, I think I showed that one. I think I showed that one last week. I'm going to share this one this week because since I'm I'm doing the guitar stuff and it's gear, right? I'm going to show off this one that I bought in, I think I bought this in 2005. Uh, Kramer, if you know anything about guitars, especially from like the 80s and 90s, and you know about the, um, TJ, come on. All right, you need to stop screwing around and get that water heater done, brother. All right, comment. Yeah. But thanks for the comment. We appreciate it. Uh, Kramer, it, if there was someone out there who rocked hard, they were probably sporting a Kramer. This was like a shredding machine. That's what Kramer's known for. And instead of humbuckers, they've got the dual rails up here, quad rails down here. Uh, th this sucker will scream. So, and it's pretty cool looking. It's a nice quilted maple top and it's all uh, contoured and polished. And uh, I absolutely love this. I just did a truss rod adjustment on this a day or two ago because over the years it had gotten just a slight bow in it and it is playing nice. I'm really digging it. So, all right, we'll continue the tour of guitars as we, uh, as we move through the weeks moving forward. I, I feel bad. We got eight people here now. The, the number keeps creeping up and uh, right as we're running out of things to talk about. So, uh, let's see, Toby, something I was thinking about, I want to bounce this off of you. Um, 
at some point, I'm thinking maybe in the fall, as things start to calm down a little bit, I want to see if we can get together with the folks down at the sawmill in Lawrence, South Carolina. It's a couple hours away. They got a fantastic facility. Uh, TJ and I were down there about six weeks ago for the gathering, uh, big firearms industry show. Um, really cool facility. Um, I want to go down there and do like a team weekend and see if we can't get some trainers to come in. Uh, Scotty Puckett works there. He's a really kind of high-end trainer. Uh, I know Steve is one of the owners. He was, uh, mm, I don't think I'm allowed to say what he did. So he's pretty highly trained. We'll put it that way. Um, I think that'd be kind of cool. You, you think that'd be interesting? Oh yeah. You know me, I'm in for something like that. Any, yeah. any kind of training class where you're actually getting to learn a skill or improve your skill. That, yeah. that definitely interests me. That's what I'm yeah, I was a little heartbroken that you guys got to go to the Lawrence thing. That was the one where you had to pay to pay to play, so to speak. I know. I know. Everybody said, you guys said, Oh, we're not going. And then I saw the pictures and I was, I was pretty heartbroken. So I, uh, well, dude, let me tell you there, there were, um, trying to decide how much I want to disclose about this. Um, it's not every day. I don't get a lot of name drop opportunities, right? Yeah. So I had, uh, I had asked the question about the same time you did of uh, Josiah at Palmetto when, when the invitation came out to go to that event. And I'm like, I don't see a media sign up. All I see is the, um, all I see is the regular, like for people to pay to sign up. And he said, well, yeah, everyone signs up the same. Like if you're coming, unless you're a sponsor, you're paying to get in. And uh, I was like, well, we, that's not typically how it works for, um, for media. You know, we're working, we're working to promote those products for those brands. You know, they, they typically, you know, cover the cost of us being there so that, um, so that we can afford to, you know, not lose our shirts by going to cover the event. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so then about 20 minutes later, my phone starts ringing and Josiah's like, okay, hang, hang on. Uh, let me, let me join Chad in. So, so Chad, the CEO at Pomodoro State Armory, and Josiah, one of the founders of Pomodoro State Armory, are calling to to talk through the logic of why they set it up the way they did, and you know, by and you know, I I told him my perspective, and he told me his perspective, and at the end of it, he said, "Well, okay, I'll tell you what, I'll give you two free passes," and and you know, TJ had already uh, been committed on that one. Uh, I'll give you two free passes to get in. And, uh, and Chad really likes Caleb. They shoot together sometimes, he said. And if Caleb wants to come, he can come. That's all I can do for you. Anyone else are going to have to pay. And so, so that's what happened. And, you know, to, to be honest, there were a lot of media there that don't know about that. There were a fair amount of media that are bigger than Gear Report that paid to get in. And we, we at least got a couple passes. So I didn't want to push my luck too hard. Um, but then the interesting part there is the way the weather happened, a bunch of things fell in place. And instead of sleeping in the tent down at the bottom of the hill, uh, which TJ was not thrilled about, we ended up in the, um, in the facility with the Palmetto State Armory crew. We were in one of their rooms, actually. So we were embedded with them and got more face time than we could have ever wanted with the Pomodoro State Armory folks. So it, it was really neat. Um, it was a strange event, though, because it was it was like a range day that we would go to a firearms industry range day. But the public was there. So then you kind of have that natural, you know, clash. Everyone was polite. No one was rude to each other. I'm not saying that kind of clash clash of goals where they paid to get in they want to get access and shoot everything. And then we walk up to film. And of course the brands are like, no, 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 here, come over here. And they take one of the guns out of the line and the people were just waiting to shoot that gun. <laughs> it's like, Hey, sorry, you know, we're not trying to jump the line, but you know, we, we have one more hour left and four more brands we got to film with. So that, that was a little awkward, but you know, it worked out. Yeah, if they do it in the future, it seems like they should probably do one day that's just media and brands and then open it to yeah. the public afterwards. Sounds logical. Yeah, we we had we we ate dinner with with them and uh, and Hank and Lola, uh, Hank Strange and Lola. 
And we talked about that there. And I think we all agreed that if they do it like Friday will be media only and then Saturday, something like that, you know, Saturday will be open to the public. Speaking of that which, you open. mentioned the dates for the 88 event later in May. It's actually 21st through the 23rd. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I'm not sure what that means. Really? Yeah. If you look at the dates, it's 21, 22, 23. Interesting. That's right. Because we normally go down on Thursday night, don't we? Oh, right. that's going to be messed up because I have, I I am one of the adults in charge of the local Sea Scout unit and we are short on adults. So if I'm not adults. there... Adults. They can't have a meeting. I know. It's crazy <laughs> what they'll call an adult these days. <laughs> That's right. It? it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if, if I don't show up, usually they don't have enough people. They don't have enough uh, uh, legal aged, you know, responsible people and they have to cancel the meeting. So, yeah, we're going to have to see how that works out. But at least it's at Red Hill Range. They have had it yeah. in central and southern Georgia instead of northern Georgia the last few mm -hmm. times. And that's a lot further for us. Better for TJ, not so good for us. True story. Yep, it is. All right. Well, I think we have squandered 41 minutes of people's time. What do you say we go ahead and shut this down? I'm game, man. Whatever you say. I'm not even going to tell you what I thought you just said. Uh, any plugs for anything at Mining Ridge Armor you want to talk about? Uh, sure. I can just plug the business overall since we've still got technically 19 more minutes or whatever. Um, I just have recently updated our operating model. As I mentioned earlier, we, we've got a classroom built out now and we've got a more formalized range, include we finally built a, a, a semi-proper berm uh, and seeded it with grass and all that good stuff. So we, we've really been improving the classes throughout this year. Um, and true story, I don't like being an adult either. Adulting is super, super hard, super, super hard. Um, but where I was going with that is we've, we've actually also updated the website. We've updated our operating model. Uh, I've started dropping a lot more advanced classes like a Rampart pistol course and things like that um, and teaching those. So, you know, just keep, keep an eye on MinerRidgeArmory.com. Obviously, I do still have a few things. In, I have a few small things in queue uh, for gear report. It's all going to be written articles, though, nothing video worthy, uh, just to be frank. You know, as far as price point goes, most of them are, you know, sub $200 items. And so that doesn't necessarily warrant or justify putting the time and effort into doing a video. But keep an eye on MinerRidgeArmory.com, like the Minor Ridge Army Facebook page and Instagram and follow us there. Um, you know, obviously follow me on LinkedIn and keep an eye out for everything we do for Gear Report. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff's hopefully going to be coming down the line as the year progresses now that we've got now that I've got the ability and the, the room and the space and the facility to do things, I'm going to start doing things. Right. Awesome. Well, looking forward to that. Maybe, maybe at some point I will be able to come out and take a class with you because mm -hmm. everyone knows I'm not as competent as I didn't say uh, it. it may I sometimes appear. Yeah. Seriously, shooting's a perishable skill, and with the ammo shortage and all the other things on my plate, I have not shot much lately, and I am getting rusty. I really need to get out there. Um, bad, yeah. I got a bunch of forty-five. Maybe I'll go out and shoot some forty-five. That could be fun. But I got to shoot three hundred blackout pretty soon too. We shall see. All right, folks. What is that? So that's a so in, inside joke there. Don't want to, to reveal. We wouldn't get ourselves in trouble with it, but you know there was a uh, less lethal rounds, the the rubber rubber ball projectiles for shotguns, um, and you know, Mr. Cockrum and I had had a few of those and a twelve gauge one time, and we were debating on whether we should test one each other or not. I mean, you know, just you know how it goes. I, I I may or may not be able to admit whether there was alcohol involved or not, but at any rate, we did not mm -hmm. test them on one another. Mm -hmm. We did not test them on one another. We instead did what he did what he said, and we used cardboard as a, as a berm to see how much it would penetrate. Those things penetrate pretty solid. That was a probably lot. a good call. Yeah, probably yeah. a really good yeah, call. Yeah, and at roughly like thirty feet. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 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 All right. Good story. Yeah. Thank you for I'm, sharing. I'm breathing. No broke ribs, so obviously yep. it came out okay. Yeah. But. Yep. All right. We blew right through the shit shooting portion, <laughs> and. Uh, with that, I think we're going to shut it down. Thank you so much for squandering 45 minutes with us, everyone. You're never going to get that time back, but we appreciate you spending it with us. Until next time, go check out Toby at Mining Ridge Armory, and we'll see you at the range. <laughs>